Hey, eighth grade. Last but not least, we have Newton's third law. So if you have not already, go into Teams, copy and paste Newton's third law, and then add this to your force in motion, uh, Newton's laws of motion page that we added the other day or should have added. Okay, so this one is probably one of the biggest misconceptions that students have with Newton's laws of motion. So Newton's third law says that when two objects collide, one object puts a force on the second object, and the second object puts a force back on the first object that is equal but in an opposite direction. I think this is hard for a lot of people to understand because they think, all right, a semi collides with the Prius, okay? Newton's third law says they put the same force on it. So the semi puts a force on the Prius, but the Prius puts an equal sized force right back on the semi. And people are like, nah, that's not correct. Because what they observe is the effect on the Prius and the effect on the semi after the force is applied. So that's where there's a big misconception that you guys have to draw a line between what is the force and what does the acceleration of the velocity look like after they collide? So obviously, if you have a semi that collides head on with the Prius, the semi is going to keep moving, right? It's going to keep moving towards the Prius, but that Prius is going to shoot off in the opposite direction. That doesn't mean that they didn't have the same force applied to them. It just means that they had a different acceleration because of their mass after that force was applied. So this kind of ties back into Newton's second law when we learn that force equals mass times acceleration. If they have an equal force, but different masses, they're gonna see different accelerations, okay? So what you have to understand about Newton's third law is that even though two objects are of way different sizes or way different masses, when they collide, they put the same force on each other, okay? So you guys are playing outside and you are running and you are a little 100 pound kid, and you run into a 300 pound kid, you will react differently after you collide, but when you are in the process of colliding, you are putting the same force on each other, but in an opposite direction. So the 300 pound kid will put a force on the 100 pound kid, and the 100 pound kid will put an equal force, but in an opposite direction, back on the 300 pound kid. Okay, but the reason they respond differently is back to Newton's second law. If we have the same force, like I just told you, the 300 pound kid puts the same force that the 100 pound kid puts back on him in an opposite direction, but because they are a different mass, they're gonna ex uh, experience different acceleration. Okay, so when two objects collide, one object puts a force on the second object, the second object puts an equal and opposite force back on the first object. These two forces are always equal and opposite. So when you have two objects colliding, they put an equal force on each other regardless of the mass, okay? They respond differently in their acceleration because of the mass, okay? So after the collision, they may have different velocities due to the mass, but the force is always equal. You guys uh, will be or have already done a lab looking at um, what we call dynamic cars. Basically, these cars have a little metal ring on the front of them that shows the force of a collision. So what you'll see is every time those two forces, uh, those two cars collide, those rings where they collide on the front will compress. And no matter what the weight of the different cars are, so we might add books to it or we might add little like gym weights to them, no matter what the weight of the car is, every time we have those two cars collide, you guys will notice that the rings on the front of them that show the force always compress the same amount, okay? They might bounce off differently. So if we have one that has a heavy weight on it and one that has no weight at all, we'll see them compress the same amount, assuming we push them at the same speed. But either way, they're still gonna compress the same amount, but the car without the weight might shoot away faster than the car with the weight. Okay, so you guys will notice that same amount of force in the compression when they collide, but how they react afterwards may be different due to Newton's second law, okay? So if you guys have any questions on that, please let me know. But what you do need to take out of this is when two objects collide, no matter what the size of the objects are, they always put the same force on each other, equal and opposite. Okay, they have different reactions afterward due to Newton's second law. Let me know if you guys have any questions and I will talk to you soon. Bye.